day viewers, it's Saturday morning, I am on my way to watch my daughter's netball game, but I've just been doing some invoicing and I'm writing invoices for a, um, a pretty common theme these days, and that is people getting ripped off with buying home battery systems. So what I'm finding happening is people are buying battery systems with the preconceived notion that if you've got a battery, you're automatically going to have backup power when there's a power outage. But that's not always the way. Different batteries can do different things. They have different functions. Um, and even the ones that can do backup power, they have different uh, functions. Some will just do a single backup circuit, some can do your whole home, some can island, uh, so they can remain off grid indefinitely because they'll keep your inverter powered up. So I'm getting customers ringing me who have recently bought a battery system and it's not working. Um, either it's not working altogether, um, they're not set up in the app, um, or it's not doing backup function, um, all sorts of stuff. So I'll give you an example of a job I did yesterday. Um, client calls me, says he's newly installed, and this is like the third one in the last couple of weeks. But yesterday's one was pretty, pretty good. So he brings me up, he would have spent 30 grand on this system, I'd say, 20, 25, 30 grand. Uh, 10 kilowatt inverter. Um, and I think he had about 15 kilowatts, kilowatt hours worth of battery storage. So newly installed in July, and up until now, September, the whole system has been sitting there idle, doing nothing. So at the end of the video, I'm gonna tell you how to avoid getting ripped off and how to make sure that the system does exactly what it should do. Okay, so anyway, this, this guy rings me up. I go out there. The installation's not bad. There's a few things that aren't compliant with our WA regulations, some of which are a bit petty, but anyway, we have to do them properly. Um, so the installation wasn't too bad, but he, he wasn't even set up on the app properly, so he couldn't see on his app what the home battery system was doing. He couldn't see if it was producing power, if he was exporting power, if he was importing power, anything. So the first step was I got him, got the app set up for him. Um, and once we did that, we discovered that the, the whole battery sit 30 grand's worth of system is sitting there doing absolutely nothing and he's importing power from the grid. So what had happened is the installer, which is usually the way, you know, a lot of the installers are paid uh, by a retailer, they're a subcontractor, um, they go there, they do the installation, all they want to do is get in and get out as quick as possible, and that's fine, I'll get it, but they need to set and commission the system up properly um, to avoid this situation. So we went in, um, I consulted with tech support, and we eventually, after about two hours, changed a few parameters and finally got the system working as it should. Now, I've just had to give him a $550 invoice for that, for me going out there and setting it up for him. Um, I'm not a charity, I'm here to make money, um, and you know the system's been sitting in there for two, two and a half months doing nothing. Um, he pro now, this is a characteristic of a solar retailer that typically will operate out of a virtual office, so I mean, it could be for all intents and purposes, a 20 year old kid sitting in an apartment with a laptop, buying leads from different platforms such as Solar Quotes or all the other lead generation platforms. They contact you, they sell you the system. Once they've got your money, they pay a subcontractor uh, to uh, install the system. Now, neither party really have that invested interest to make sure your system is operating correctly. So, the retailer just wants your money. 
the installer just wants to get the system installed, get a green light in the inverter, and boom, he's fucking out of there. He's, he's on his way to his next job, because that's how he's making his money. And the reason he's in such a hurry is because the retailer is paying him next to nothing to do the job. The flip side to that is, do your homework, find a retailer um, or a supplier installer that has a business premises local to your area that you can walk into and be a pain in their ass if they haven't done the job that they were expected to do and that they employ in-house installers and they've been around for a while. Um, that way you know that they have an invested interest to make sure your system operates correctly uh, because it, they know that if it doesn't do what it's supposed to do you're going to come back into their office and be a pain in the ass. Um, whereas if it's just simply a phone number operating out of a virtual office, you can't go there and be, you know, um, and jump up and down and demand they sort it out. So this system finally got sorted out. Um, I've given him the invoice. Now, what I would say is that when, you, when you're looking into buying a home battery, just be aware that, like I said at the beginning of the video, and this is the first tip, make sure that what you're buying can do what you want. So if you want backup power, make sure the system you're buying can do backup power. If you want three-phase backup power, make sure it can do three-phase backup power. Because um, like I said, some systems can only do a, a single uh, circuit backup. Some will do whole home. So work out what you expect and what you need, what you want from the battery system and ensure that it can do it. Not all battery systems offer battery backup. It's a misconception. So if you spend 30 grand on a battery system and a solar and then there's a power outage and you've got no backup power, you're going to be pretty pissed off. Um, which actually brings me to my next point. So this, this, I'm sorry, I think I'm a bit all over the place, a bit excited. Um, this guy knew that this system could do backup power, but the backup circuits haven't been connected. So they're sitting there with no cables in them. And it's, again, it's a fairly complex job. You've got to run a second AC feed back to the switchboard, segregate your backup circuits, label them, rewire them. It's quite involved. Um, so he knew what the system could do, but it wasn't doing it. Um, so just be aware of that as well. Some people still think that if you've got solar power, you're gonna have backup power. It doesn't work that way. You, if you've just got a solar power system with no batteries, when the power goes out, your power goes out too. And the reason for that is you've got a grid-tied inverter. It references the grid. When the grid's gone, the inverter shuts down. Why does it shut down? because if Western Power are trying to work on the poles and wires and they turn the power off, they can't have all these inverters feeding back into the grid. So it's extremely important um, and we have stringent testing processes in Australia to ensure that that happens, that when the grid goes down, they disconnect straight away. Um, anyway, so with this guy yesterday, he kind of did everything correctly in the initial process. So he did his homework on the product. He, know what, he knew what the product could do. Um, he thought he was buying from a reputable retailer, but I would argue that point. I won't name and shame. Um, now, how to avoid getting ripped off. A, do your homework. Make sure the system you're buying is capable of doing what you want it to do specifically. Preferably get it in writing. So email your retailer, tell them what you want it to do and get their response, not on a phone call, but in writing. So you've got it in writing, okay? So you've paid for it, you've bought the system, you've made the decision, the installers come out, they install the system before they leave. Make sure they set you up with the app on your phone and give you a demonstration of the system doing everything it should do. This is what they're paid for. This is what ex is expected. So the system, if you've got backup, should do backup. Make sure it's doing the circuits that you want backed up, because that's another thing. It can take some time 
to work out which circuits are which and to ensure that you're backing up the correct circuits. I've had many occasion where I had another client the other month digressing here another client the other month <laughs> he bought a battery system midway through the installation the installers told him it can't do backup so he told him to fuck off and told the retailer he's not paying for the system come and get it two years later they did not come and collect the system the company went broke they left it there he's got this battery system sitting there for two years doing nothing he rings me up and says Jace come and pull this system out and give me one which will do what I want it to do. I said, well, what do you want it to do? He said, well, I want it to do this, this, and this. I said, well, send me photos of what you've got. Turns out the system he bought can do exactly what he wanted it to do. It's been sitting there for two years doing nothing. That cost him about $1,500 for me to go out there and sort it all out and you know, I'm not an expert on every system, so I have to do my homework, I have to work out how it works, do some research, call tech support. I've got it all working. Um, sorted out his backup circuits. He told me what circuits he wanted backed up, but he got the labeling wrong, so I did it. I left, he got his circuits wrong, so he asked me to come back again. So just, it's important that you check before your installer leaves that your system is doing everything you expected it to do, okay? Do not let them leave until they've shown you how it works. If you can't avoid them leaving and they're just pff, fucking out of there, do not pay the final bill, the balance of your payment to the retailer until you are 100% certain that the system does exactly what you expect it to do because there is no better way to get a response from them really quick if you're withholding 10 grand or more from them, okay? So do not pay your final amount until you are comfortable. The system does exactly what you want it to do as you put it in writing to them in the email and you've got their response confirming that this is what the system will do, okay? So there's, there's the way to go about it don't pay the final bill until it's doing exactly what it should be doing. Alright.